Like everything on your computer, WordPress is a software and there are regularly updates to it. In fact, we've had, you can call it a major update. Um, is it now a year or two ago? And this update is actually still ongoing. I'll say it with tongue in the cheek. It was supposed to revolutionize WordPress. It was supposed to blow everything out of the water. And so far, it's just been trickles here and there. It seems to be not a big bang, but a little small few bangs that's happening over the next few years. I say that because it's important to understand that with this video, I may be using a version of WordPress, but by the time you may watch this somewhere in the future, your version will be different and it may look different. I predict it's not going to be exceptionally different to what I'm doing now, if it's within the next year or two, but there may be some areas like, hey, this is not how mine looks at all. So we'll quickly talk about that and I'll show you where to check for that. And I'm pretty confident almost while we are doing this course, the new update that's going to roll out soon will happen. So we will have an opportunity to see how you will actually do that update within your local server. Then let's set our site title and tagline. I'll tell you more about that, as well as how to change the language of the WordPress admin to something that maybe you are more comfortable with. Now, for example, I speak Afrikaans. It's a language we speak in South Africa. But if you were to put a software program in Afrikaans in front of me, I'll totally freak out. I'll, I won't be able to, to understand it at all because this is where English just plays the official language in our country. But in other countries, local language is more accessible and you may just want to do that while you're working with WordPress. Of course, for this tutorial, if you switch, you may get confused when I'm in English and you're in a different language, but in most cases, you'll be able to follow along. I'll open up my local server again, and I'll do this once in a while just so that you can get used to it. I'm not going to do it each and every time. You should know already by now how to open local. Find the website that we had created, click on it, and remember when we had created this website, we had called it WordPress 101, and that's important. We'll talk about that soon. Click on start site, starting up the engines, and then we click here on admin. It opens up our browser for us and it loads WordPress for us. Let's talk quickly about the WordPress version. In the WordPress toolbar here at the top, go all the way to the left and you see this W. If you hover over it, you get what we call a drop down menu. Every time you hover over something and there's something that falls down at the bottom, we refer to that as a drop down. And you can see there's a number of things over there. You're, I would say, confidently never going to use it. But just go ahead and click on the W. And this will show you the current WordPress installation, which is 5.7.2. That's where we're currently running WordPress. Yours should look the same if you did it within the release of these videos. But probably in the next few videos, this is going to jump to 5.8. Now I'll do the tongue in cheek thing again. I've seen online people talk about, whoa, this is a huge update. Yeah, it's a huge update, but it's almost not gonna affect anything we do. They bring in a lot of stuff that we still cannot use for a hopeful 5.9 or 5.10 update in the future. And you can hear there's a little bit of sarcasm in my voice and a little bit of cynicism. Don't let that throw you off. That's just how I talk about when people make huge promises and they say, oh, it's awesome. You have to see it. Then when you go see, it, it's like, meh. And when 5.8 does roll out, we're going to come back because we'll have to update here within our admin area. And I'll show you how to do that. Right. So remember, if you're unsure about your WordPress version, you can just click up here on the W within your admin area and it will take you here. Also, you can check within your local server. Over here, WordPress version 5.7.2. Do you remember how to go to the front end of your site? There are altogether like four ways. The first one is just simply click here on the site title and it takes you to the front end. And then if you click it again, it takes you to the back end or you can click, hold and drag it up to your browser tab area and drop it there and it will open a new one for you. Third one is hold control command on your keyboard and click on the title or the link you want to open. And the last one is to right click and click on open link in new tab. 
right so let's go here and focus on this part here where it says wordpress 101 just another wordpress site this over here is the same as this over here this is your site title the name of your website not your website address just your name of whatever your service or your company is for example if you go to websites for beginners mine is called websites for beginners then under that there is this second one called just another wordpress site this we refer to as the tagline the tagline has got dinosaur footprints within the wordpress industry it started out long ago and these two played a very important role in the old days when you were designing a new site within WordPress. Similar to this page, they were displayed at the top and it showed you the title of the site as well as important information about what your site is about. So site title, this one is rudimentary. This is the name of my site. Tagline is a brief short description with powerful words that will describe what your site is about. So you really need to think a little bit about what is my site about? Am I selling? Am I marketing? What is my product? And use those keywords in your tagline. Because when people search on Chrome and Google or whatever search browser they are using, this is what that search engine is going to be looking for. It's going to look at your site title and your tagline. And when people search, for example, homemade marmalade cookies, and your site title and tagline includes maybe marmalade and homemade, it's going to say, whoa, we've got a match here. And then it's going to present, hopefully, the person who is searching for that with your site as a link that they can click on. Does it make sense? Site title, tagline. But wait, there's more. Actually, if you go up here where the tab is and you hover over it, you will be surprised to find that both of these also appear within the tab. Whether it's going to be an Edge, Safari, Firefox, or Chrome, it's going to appear there as well. So you're going to have your site title, again, WordPress 101, and then the tagline, just another WordPress site. Let's go and see how WordPress for Beginners looks in this case. What have I done there? And you're going to notice two things. My site title, Websites for Beginners, appears here but it's not automatic. I actually added that myself, but my tagline is nowhere to be seen. And that's why I mentioned to you that this way of displaying it is a little bit archaic. We don't do it anymore, even though it can still be done and WordPress insists to do it. But what we do lately is the tagline is there in the back. It's somewhere they're hidden. Chrome can still find it. Google can still find it. Bing can still find it, but your visitors won't see it. But look what happens when I hover over the tab here at the top. There is a tagline. Learn how to make your own website with no coding or experience. Think about what I said there. Learn, very important, website, no coding experience. And the idea here is that when somebody like you were to search online how to make my own website with no experience or no coding, hopefully my tagline may, may, may just match yours. I, I don't want to overemphasize the tagline. It's not a miracle machine. It's not going to get you all the visitors in the world to come to your website, but it's important that you do think about it at the very beginning and not forget about it. Because trust me, Bob and Sally, you will go to so many websites today and then you will see when you hover over at the top, it says just another WordPress site. True as Bob, people forget to change the tagline. There are so many websites out there with the tagline, just another WordPress site. So don't forget to change that. Now that you know what is the site title and you know what is the tagline, let me go show you where you can change it. I will close this one and we leave the front open so you can see how the changes are made. Go into the admin area and here, navigation sidebar, we go all the way to settings because this is your settings for your site and we select general. The very first two options here at the top, site title and tagline. Let's change the site title. I will say WordPress or total beginners. And then tagline, learn WordPress 
step by step from scratch scratch there we go wordpress for total beginners then wordpress step by step from scratch there's a lot of other stuff here we'll take a look at some of them soon and then here at the bottom scroll down click on save changes this is often overlooked by newcomers to wordpress they forget to scroll down and look at the save changes because if i go out and i click for example on the front end WordPress didn't ask me, hey, are you, don't you want to save that? Hey, you changed something. Do you want to save it? If I click again and go back into the admin area, settings, general, nothing updated. So remember always to scroll down when you're in the WordPress admin area to look for that save changes. Let's do it again. What did we say here? WordPress for total beginners. And then I have to retype all of this, learn WordPress step by what is that step i can actually type very well except when i do these tutorials then wordpress step by step from scratch scroll down click on save changes so we've changed our site title we've changed our tagline go to the front and now we're going to update this page or refresh this page you may have done it, you may have never done it, but a refresh allows you to bring in the new information that we've done in the back end. So this is a very good example. Your first adventure into making a change here in the back end, saving it, and the front end still displays the old information. To refresh the page within your browser, you will see there's that little icon that always shows you how to refresh. However, also look at the shortcut key on Windows Control R and on Mac, it's Command R. Click on that and look at how quickly it updates. So now my site is called WordPress for total beginners. And then my tagline, learn WordPress step-by-step -step from scratch. Yes, you can change the site title anytime you want. It's not going to affect though the title here. This WordPress 101 will remain the same because this is how local will remember it. That's just for your practice. If you go up here to the tab, you will also see it's updated there. The whole thing, WordPress for total beginners, blah, blah, blah. I will just change it back to WordPress 101 so I don't get confused. So I go back to the back end and WordPress 101. I will leave the tagline and then scroll, save changes, go to the front, refresh. Do you remember? Control R, Command R, and there we go. Now you understand site title as well as tagline. Change yours now. You can copy what I did, but just practice it a few times so you can understand you have this control there. Now let's talk about the language settings for you. Go to the back end. Make sure you are in settings and general, and you will see that site language appears over here. If you're running local, in most cases, it's going to install English United States. Select the drop down, and you will see there's a plethora to select from. There is a huge WordPress community out there, people who are voluntarily and do it for free, adding language so that people can use WordPress in their own language. Now, like I told you, here is mine actually, the first option Afrikaans. I'll select it, but it scares me because often I don't know how to go back to English. I'll select it, Afrikaans, click on Save Changes, and then WordPress will save it, but because you've also used the new language, it's going to refresh your site. All right, let me just close this. So you can see, now you will see, for example, here it says Webwerftal, Webwerf already too difficult for me to pronounce, Tate Suene, etc. If you change it, for example, to something, let's go to, traditional Chinese, then I can go over here. And stuur verwijzigings, okay. No comments. Now it's going to load traditional Chinese for us, you can see. So if you're in a place like Singapore, Hong Kong, or Taiwan, this is probably the interface that you would prefer when you're working with it. And most people do, and it's also regularly updated. I want you to note though, after changing it, there in the toolbar, this little thing has appeared. 
there's a little wheel that shows like a spinning or a changing thing with a one next to it. Note it, but we'll come back to it once we're back in English, because at this moment, I won't be able to explain to you what it is. I'll switch it back now to English. And if you ever make a mistake like this, where you throw it in a language and you don't know how to get back to it and you don't know which of these titles is for the language, just look here at the little icon, select the drop down, and this time I'll put it on English South Africa. Yeah, we do speak English a little bit different here in South Africa. So I click on English South Africa. Then here at the bottom, I'll just click on the blue button. I guess that save changes. And for all intents and purposes, you're not going to see any difference between English American or British or South African because a few spelling changes here and there with in WordPress. Now it is in English South Africa, my interface. If you now again look here at the toolbar at the top, you will see it says translation updates. Click on this. And basically, WordPress is just saying you've changed the language. We need to do a few updates here and there to make sure that you know, WordPress is running properly. All you do is go here to the bottom where it says translations. New translations are available and just click on update translations. You don't have to really care what happens there. In fact, you don't have to care at all. You just need to know that when you switch the language of your WordPress admin area, you may see this pop up. Look here in the top toolbar, go to it, click on update translations, and then you're done. It's done. Last one we will change here, just for interest sake, is the time zone, which your website recognizes. And that's going to be the time zone where you are. So when you put something out like a new article for your blog, and the time is automatically recorded when you publish that, it will take the correct time zone. Go again to Settings, General, and then we go to Time Zone over here. And this is in UTC. You have to check online what is your UTC. UTC is the same as GMT for Greenwich. And if I select from it South Africa, we are in plus two. So I'll scroll down, select UTC plus two. And if you want to change the date format, that's up to you. I don't really mess with this and save changes. You've learned then where you can check your WordPress version. You've also learned that you can change your site title and your tagline, and that you can update it on the front end by having your front end open and just clicking refresh as you make those changes. And then how to set up the site language for you so that you can work with it. And then also how to change the time zone. Let's create something in lesson six. We're going to create a first page. Then we're going to see how we set that as our homepage.